Hey, Pathway Church, happy Father's Day to you. We are so glad that you guys are joining us today as we celebrate our dads and we kick off a new series. My name is Christian Hallberg. I'm the middle school pastor at the Westlink campus, and I'm joined today by one of our online hosts, Amy Blaisdell. Yes, hey, Pathway family. You know, dads come in all sizes and shapes. Your dad might live close or far away, or he may have passed away and you really miss him right now. You may not have even been able to have a close relationship with your dad. He may have been absent or not a great influence. Yeah, and you know, no matter what your relationship with your father is like, you know, we want to remember and remind you today that all of us who follow Jesus have a heavenly father who loves us deeply. Absolutely. If this is your first time with us, then welcome. We certainly hope that it is your first time of many times. If you are new, then you are at the right place. No matter where you are in your faith, this is a great place to connect with Jesus and other people. Feel free to type that you are new in the chat so our people can say hi and welcome you. Yeah, and if you are new to Pathway, then let us welcome you by giving you a free coffee from Starbucks. What you can do is you can text the word new to 316-444-4180 and we'll send you a digital gift card that you can use on your next trip there. And when we say new, we mean that this could be your first time watching or it may mean that you have been watching for the last several weeks or even months, but our online team hasn't had a chance to meet you yet. We would love to get to meet you, and that starts by you texting the word NEW to the number on the screen below.
Well, as we come to our generosity moment, there are many different ways that you can give to God here at Pathway Church. And I got a question for you right now. How many of us have one of these? Like 100% of us mm-hmm. watching right now, right? Yes, I want yeah. everyone to show us your phone. I know we all have our smartphones, right? Well, the next question I have for you is who all has the Pathway Church app? Well, if you don't, this is a great time to install it. There are so many great features on this app. You can watch the live stream, follow along with the message notes, and you can give to God through the Pathway Church app. Yeah, and giving on the app, it's really one of the easiest and most secure ways that you can give. You can do that on there with electronic check. You could use a debit card, credit card, and there's lots of other things you can do. You can review your giving on the app. You can even use it to update your contact information at any time. Your gifts become part of God's plan to resource the local church to do His work here on earth. We are thankful for you as you partner with us and join us in what God is doing in our community and around the world. So thank you. Yes, thank you. That's right. And this week while you are giving, be praying that God would grow your trust and your faith in Him, that He would multiply the gifts that we give, that they would have an impact here in Wichita and around the world. Well, get ready for a message from our lead pastor, Todd Carter, as we kick off a brand new series entitled, Get Better. Feel free to open up your Pathway Church app and on the weekly guide, click the message notes to follow along. Well, welcome Pathway family, Westlink, Goddard, Valley Center, those of you who are watching online this Father's Day weekend for this first week of our brand new series, Get Better. And as I was thinking about fathers and all that they do, I saw a couple pictures this week uh, where fathers were being very creative, and so I thought I'd show them to you, like, like this guy, I think this is really creative. I mean, I love this guy, man, he's using his newborn kid as a blade holder, that's awesome. Or, or how about this guy? I mean, this guy, I mean, I don't know if that's OSHA approved or not, but that looks fun. I don't know. I thought that was pretty creative. Or or this guy. I I don't know. I love this idea. I'm not sure it ended so well, (laughs) but but to me, it's awesome. Well, Well, fathers are awesome, but every now and then, even when they're trying to do something good, sometimes bad things can happen. And that's really what I want to talk about today, when life breaks down. And really, this when life breaks down is a huge theme uh, of the book that we're going to be studying for the next seven weeks, the book of James. Now, just to give you a little bit of background on the book of James, it was written by the half-brother of Jesus, who was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And back in the first century, the Christ followers there were experiencing a tremendous amount of persecution from the traditional Jews as well as the Romans to the point where they were uh, really ran out of Jerusalem. Their lives had broken down and they were so discouraged and so disheartened that James took this opportunity to write them this letter. And, And so this letter in a very practical way is about getting better when life breaks down. It's about development. It's about really developing and maturing in our faith in God. And so my prayer over these next several weeks is that you'll take to heart these words of James and you'll see your own faith in him really get better. You know, uh, I think as we've gone through this uh, season uh, that we've been living through, all of us have obviously been affected. I mean, it started with lockdowns and masks and health problems, and now we're facing all these challenges of reopening. 
But it seems like to me every time we turn around, there are, you know, we're confronted with these new problems, whether they be socially, politically, economically, or even personally. You know, here at uh, a Pathway, we receive over 100 prayer requests every week from people who are going through all kinds of difficult and very challenging situations. We get requests about health problems, we get requests about marriage problems, about financial problems, about job problems. And maybe as you hear me kind of roll that list off, maybe that's where you're at today. Or maybe it's not one of those problems, but maybe you find yourself struggling with an incredible amount of sadness right now. Or maybe you're struggling with an overwhelming amount of anxiety or fear right now. Or maybe you find yourself in a situation where you're just dealing with an incredible amount of anger. Well, I want to let you know the good news is today that James has some great words for you. And he's got some great words, really, of instruction from God about how to get better in the middle of whatever circumstance that you're facing. Because no matter how badly life is affecting you right now, or no matter how awful things are, James's message is that your faith in God can get better. That your faith in God can get stronger, more courageous, so that you can walk through the most dark and challenging time of your life and in the end have great confidence. So look with me at what James has to say. James chapter 1 beginning with verse 2. He says there, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, now the reality is problems and difficulties, they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. There is a huge variety of them. The Greek word here, many kinds, is literally multicolored. That, that's how it's really trans, should be translated. The, the problems that we face have many shades. They have many varieties. They vary in intensity, they, they vary in uh, duration. Some are really minor inconveniences and some are major crises in our lives. And the problems that we face, they're unpredictable, aren't they? And the word face here in the Greek literally means to fall into unexpectedly. We didn't see it coming. We didn't know that it was gonna happen. We didn't know we were gonna have that crisis. We, we didn't know that when we were coming to, to, to church today, we were going to have a flat tire. But, but the trials, the difficulties that we face in life, they, they have a huge variety, and they come, don't they, when we least expect it. So how do we start getting better then when we face these different problems in our life? Well, James goes on. He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So first, focus on your mindset, not on your circumstance. I mean, listen again to what James says. Consider up your joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, let's all be truthful and honest. That sounds crazy. That sounds like crazy talk, I think. I mean, let's be honest. But there really is some amazing things that James is trying to communicate to us here. First, the word consider, he says here, means to take a deliberate look at. It, it means to evaluate, to make up your mind once for all. Consideration is a choice. We may not be able to control whatever circumstances going on in our lives right now, but we can control how we respond to it. And so James is saying, We've got to have a different mindset. We've got to have a different mindset as we face this problem. We've got to consider it joy because we know that whatever problem that we're facing is an opportunity that will make us stronger, more complete. It will make us better. It's going to make us better. You can have joy because you know that in the end it's going to. It seems crazy, but it's going to lead to something good. And we know this reality in our lives. We've experienced this truth before. The greatest challenges we faced, oftentimes, they produce the greatest joys. For example, it may, it may not have necessarily felt good when you were in the middle, maybe, of the hardest work project at, at your business that you've ever done in your life, but when you got finished, you, you experienced a lot of satisfaction and you experienced a lot of growth, didn't you? Or, or when a woman gets pregnant, she has all kinds of stresses, struggles, and pain that are involved in carrying and delivering that baby. But when the baby comes 
and is placed in the mother's arms, tears of joy roll down her face. And all the pain, all the suffering of those trials, they quickly are forgotten. And you may not feel good during the middle of whatever crisis or difficulty that you're experiencing right now. But you have a choice. You have the choice to have the right mindset that in the end God is going to use this difficulty to be able to produce something good in your life, that your faith will be stronger. You will be able to do something that you'll never have been able to do before. Or let me explain it this way, just to give one more kind of angle on this. How many of you decide to follow Jesus or had some significant spiritual growth in your life because everything was going awesome? My guess, not very many of you. Me either. On the other hand, how many of you started your spiritual journey and had some great spiritual growth in your life because you were facing an incredible difficulty? My guess is there's a bunch of us that would say yes to that. Let's face it, the fact is we rarely grow in life unless we've got some kind of pain in our lives. We rarely go unless we've got some kind of pain that is pushing us forward. I mean, I hate that about our humanity. I hate it about my humanity that I've got to have a whole bunch of pain in my life to be able to push me forward. You see, God whispers to us in the good times of our lives, but he shouts to us, doesn't he? He shouts to us in the middle of our pain. And retrospectively, we can see with joy from behind the great things that God has done in our lives through difficulty. Peter says it this way, he says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You know, as I was thinking about this whole concept, I started thinking about this uh, man who started coming to Pathway a few years ago. And when he first came, he was a, a wreck emotionally. Uh, his wife had left him. He had a, a drinking problem, and he was, far, he was far away from God. But because he was in so much pain, he cried out to God for help. And he had never done anything like that before in his whole life. And so he called a friend of his from Pathway, and that friend took the time, and he led that man to faith in Christ. But just asking Jesus into his life it didn't take away all of his problems. I mean, he was miserable for months. As he and I were kind of walking through that journey, we called it the land between. But you know what? Little by little, he began to grow in his faith. He was faithful to spend time with God every day in his word. He was faithful to be in fellowship with his home team. He started going to counseling for himself, and he began to just give himself in ministry to other people. And today, he and his wife are back together. They're doing better than they ever have in their whole marriage. He's been sober for over four years, and God is continuing to transform his life. I mean, it's awesome. Praise God for that. I mean, it's so cool. What God does in a person's life, only he can do it. And he would tell you that the pain in his life was awful. But he would tell you as well that God didn't waste his pain. He didn't waste his tears. That in the end, he knew that God used that to set his life in a whole different trajectory. So as you move to be able to get better, I want to encourage you, maybe in a practical way, write down the potential good that God could do as a result of the difficulty you're experiencing. And tell yourself, I'm going to have a change of mindset. I'm going to consider. I'm going to have a change of mindset. I'm going to consider pure joy as I face this difficulty in my life. I'm believing, I'm trusting God that he's got something good that he's going to accomplish in me and through me because of this suffering. Now, the next thing that James says about getting better when life breaks down is in verses 5 and 6. Look with me there. He says there, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. So, so next, focus on the point not the pain. So we really can see from these verses, kind of in a practical way, it's really about praying for wisdom and not just relief. Because our natural inclination in the middle of our problems is to pray, God, God, take away my pain. God, stop my hurt. But James is here saying, he's saying that's the wrong prayer. He says, pray that the testing of your faith by the evil one will strengthen you. Will strengthen you. When you are tested by in the hard times of your life, don't ask God to remove all the pain from you. Ask him to teach you. 
That's the prayer of wisdom. To be able to say, God, what is it that you want to teach me in the middle of all the suffering? And this is how we can focus then through our prayer on the point and not the pain. For example, when you kind of think about that concept, I can endure the dentist. I I can endure the surgeon. I can endure a personal trainer. Why? Because there's a point. There's a purpose to the pain. So we've got to focus on the point or the purpose when we face our trials. And the way that we can do that is through prayer. You, You see, pain can be productive. Pressure can produce results, and suffering can accomplish something. But so many times, our natural inclination in the middle of our difficulty is to think God is up in the sky, he's up in the sky, and he's going, oh man, they didn't do that quite right, man, I'm going to chop off their head, they're like a bunch of little ants. I mean, I think that's kind of our concept of God, that he's up there in the sky, and he's kind of waiting for us to make a mistake so he can really strike us down a little bit, kind of get us straightened all back out. But you got to see the Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father is good, He wants the very best for our lives. And he will only allow something in your life that you can truly handle and that ultimately is for your good. And and certainly he's not behind it. He may allow good. That's how powerful God is. Satan strikes with evil, but God's so powerful he can take what, what Satan meant for evil and he can use it for good. And so we need to pray in the midst of our trials that God will give us wisdom to understand what he is teaching us and how he wants us to handle it. So focus on the point and not on the pain. Then finally, James says this about getting better. He says in verse 12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So finally, get better by focusing on persevering, not on escaping. Focus on persevering, not on escaping. I don't know if you heard the story about the wife who gave her husband lessons for a per, from, a, from a personal trainer for Father's Day. I want you to listen to his journey. He said, I called and I made reservations with someone named Tanya. She's a 26-year-old aerobics instructor and an athletic clothing model. My wife seemed very pleased about how enthusiastic I was to get started. Day one, they suggest I keep this exercise diary to chart my progress this week. Start at 6 a.m. Tough to get up, but it was worth it. When I arrived at the health club, Tanya was waiting for me. She is something of a goddess with blonde hair and a dazzling white smile. Tanya was very encouraging as I did my sit-ups, though my gut was already aching from holding it in the whole time I was talking to her. This is going to be great. Day two. Took a whole pot of coffee to get me out the door, but I made it. Tanya had me lie on my back and push up this heavy iron bar into the air. Then she put weight on it. Legs were a little wobbly on the treadmill, but I made it. Her smile made it all worthwhile. Muscles feel great. Day three. The only way I can brush my teeth is by laying the toothbrush on the counter and moving my mouth back and forth over it. (laughs) Driving was okay as long as I didn't steer. Tanya was a little impatient with me and said my screaming was bothering all the other club members. <laughs> Day four, Tanya was waiting for me with her vampire teeth in full snarl. <laughs> I can't help it if I was a half hour late. It took me that long to tie my shoes. I ate in the men's bathroom until she sent Bubba in looking for me. <laughs> Day five, I hate Tanya. I hate Tanya more than any other human being has hated another human being in the history of, the, of mankind. If there was any part of my body not in extreme pain, I would hit her with it. She thought it would be a good idea for me to work my triceps. Well, I've got news, Tanya. I don't have any triceps. <laughs> Day six, got Tanya's message on my answering machine, wondering where I am. I lack the strength to use the TV remote control, so I watched 11 straight hours of the Weather Channel. Day seven, well, that's the week. Thank God it's over. Maybe next year my wife will give me something a little more fun, like a root canal or a kidney stone. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought that, one, that was funny. Uh, but the problem is here, in a, in a basic way, is that we give up. We, we don't persevere in the midst of the difficulty. And we focus on escaping our pain instead of focusing on the reward of persevering. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, And the God of all grace, 
who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and and steadfast. In Galatians chapter 6, it it says, don't grow weary in doing what is good, for in the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. So you see, perseverance is a powerful character trait, but it's not easy to acquire. Having courage in the battle, you see, only comes from being in the middle of the conflict. And steadiness in high seas only comes from being in the storm. And spiritual strength only comes by never giving up in the middle of the difficulty. And the reality is we live in a world where it looks like a lot of people are are, are giving up. But I want to encourage you, never give up. Never give up because when you never give up, you grow strong and you discover courage and confidence that God has for you that will take you to places that you've never been before. You know, it reminds me, of, of a young man who, when he was only seven years old, his family was forced out of their home uh, on a legal technicality, and he was forced to be able to help support him. A- at the age of nine, his mother died. At the age of 22, uh, he wanted to go to law school, but his education wasn't good enough. At the age of 28, after dating a girl for four years, he asked her to marry him, but she said no. At 37, on his third try, he was elected to Congress, but two years later, he failed to be reelected. At 41, his four-year-old son died. At 45, he ran for Senate and lost. At 47, he failed as a vice presidential candidate. At 49, he ran for Senate again and lost. And at 51, he was elected the 16th president of the United States of America. His name is Abraham Lincoln. And many consider Abraham Lincoln to be the greatest president who's ever lived. You see, God allowed a lot of breakdowns in President Lincoln's life before he had a breakthrough. And the same is true for you and I. God has you and I where we're at for a reason. And if we'll persevere, if we'll keep pushing, God has incredible reward and blessing for us on the other side if we never give up. You see, that's what God has for us. So this next week... If you're rolling through, and if you feel scared and overwhelmed, maybe because of a financial or a health problem or just a grief that you're going through that you're facing, or, or if you feel at the end of the rope in your marriage because you, all your feelings are gone, in that moment, in that moment, I want you to focus on having the right mindset, not just on the painful circumstance that you're going through. And in that moment, I want you to focus on the point and not all of the pain that you're going through. And I want you to focus on persevering, persevering, never giving up, and not just trying to get out of your pain. Because God wants to make your faith better. He wants to make your faith greater. He wants you to be able to face the greatest challenge of your life, and you be able to do that with great confidence because he's your God, and you're his child. That's what he wants. That's the end goal. So that we might be able to be the people that God wants us to in this world. He's, he's trying to shape us up, mold us up, so that we'll be able to accomplish his good purpose. Well, as we become, come kind of to a close of this first week, I just want us to pray about that. Pray about some of the challenges we're facing. And pray that God will just enable us to walk through this well. So I just want to ask you right now, all of our locations, those of you who are watching online, just to bow your head. Close your eyes with me. Just for a few moments as we just uh, lift this up to God in prayer. And as we begin to pray right now, I thought about a conversation I had this week with a friend of mine. And he told me this week that he's been struggling, struggling with his finances, struggling with his health, and really most of all, struggling with his emotions. And he said he was just so tired that he wanted to give up. And I leaned over to him and I said, that is so real. I felt exactly that same way before. And I know that there's some of you here today in one degree or another, that's where you're at today. You've got some problems, you've got some situations going on in your life and they seem like they're not gonna go away, they're not gonna get resolved. But today, as you think about what we've seen and what we've heard from what James says, if you want God's help and you wanna get better, I just want you to lift up your hands. 
Lift up your hands right now. If you want God's help and you want to get better about whatever's going on in your life now, lift up your hands if you want God's help and you want to get better for whatever's going on in your life right now. Praise God. Praise God. Me too. I want to get better. I want to get better. If you watch it online, you can type me in the chat. But I want to pray for us right now. Oh, Father in heaven, I just thank you so much that you are such a good God. And God, we just come before you right now and we've got all kinds of, of varieties of problems that are going on in our life. God, we just come before you and we lay them at your feet. And God, we just ask for your help. We ask for your help that you would enable us, God. That you enable us to have the right mindset, God, as we walk through this problem. God, that, that you, you would enable us, uh, a Father, to be able to persevere, uh, Lord, in the middle of whatever that we're facing. So that God, in the end, when we don't grow weary, God, we don't give up. Lord, we know that there's a great reward on the other side. Lord, you're doing something in us and through us that we can't ever imagine. So God, we give our problems and we give ourselves to you this day. Now, as we continue to pray right now, I know there's others of you who have never taken that step for the very first time. I know there's others of you who you want to get better but you've never taken that step to make Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life. And I want to let you know you'll never really get better until you get connected to the source of everything better. And that's the person of Jesus. And so today, today I don't want you to miss this opportunity to be able to get going in a new kind of direction. I don't want you to miss this opportunity to be able to have the source of everything better in your life, the person of Jesus Christ. And so I want to invite you, don't miss this opportunity right now to be able to take that step to have Jesus in your life. Pray this prayer with me right now. Oh, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, that I've made mistakes. And I'm tired, Jesus, of trying to get better on my own. I need you. And so today, I make you the leader and the Savior of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. And now use my life, Jesus, to be able to go now and offer your hope and your love to other people. Now with everybody's head still bowed and eyes still closed right now, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, and you made Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life, man, I want you to raise your hand up real high. Just to say to God that you are all in today, that you're a child of his. Raise your hand up real high. Just say that to God right now. Raise it up real high. I know that God's at work. Raise your hand up real high. Say to God, God, I want to be a part of your family today. I want to be a part of your family. Praise God. Praise God. Let me pray for you right now. Oh, Father in heaven, I just thank you so much. God, that you are always at work. Thank you so much today, God, for my friends, my brothers and sisters here today who surrendered their life to you. God, give them strength, give them peace, give them joy in the midst of whatever difficulty that they are facing. And God, I just pray that you just would bless them in the days ahead as they walk with you. We love you, God. And we just pray all these things right now in Jesus' name. Man, what a great message about getting better when life breaks down. Hey, if you are new to Pathway Church and we have not gotten the chance to be able to connect with you, we want to be able to do that. Maybe this could be your first time tuning in with us, or maybe you've watched with us for several weeks. We want you to be able to connect with someone here at Pathway. And so the way that you can do that, you can text the word NEW to 316 444 4180. If you do that, again, we will reach out to you. And then we also want to be able to bless you by sending you a digital gift card to Starbucks. You know, again, this weekend, as we celebrate our dads, our fathers on Father's Day weekend, we're also thinking about our Heavenly Father. We just want to quickly focus again one more time on the character of Jesus and remember how he came to earth for us and gave his life for our sins. You know, Paul talks about it this way in the book of Galatians. He says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. 
Because you are his sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. You see, through Jesus, we have this forever relationship with God. In fact, it tells us that we can call him Abba, which in the Hebrew is equivalent to our word in English for for daddy. It's this kind of relationship that we can have with God. And not only do we have this kind of father-child relationship with God, but it tells us that we are his spiritual heirs. So on this Father's Day weekend, we can celebrate that we have been adopted into God's family as his sons and daughters. Let's think about that now. Join us as we continue worshiping God together. I count on one thing And the same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Yes, I will too high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days. Oh, yes.